going on guys welcome back to another vlog this week we are in boston massachusetts for the 127th boston marathon it is currently saturday afternoon Bree and I just arrived to the hotel. My mom will be getting here later this evening. We just stopped by Trader Joe's, grabbed some groceries, loaded up on some food for the next couple of days before the race. And then right now I'm gonna go for a four mile run just around here by the hotel. We are in the seaport area of Boston. It's super nice up here. Lots of people, lots of stuff going on. Boston is such an epic city. So super excited to be here. Tomorrow we've got our shakeout run, the expo, going to a Red Sox game. And then Monday morning, we have the marathon. So all kinds of fun stuff this weekend. It's gonna be a great time. So let's dive into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Four mile easy run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Legs are feeling so good for the marathon in two days. I cannot wait. I'm super, super excited. Boston is such a beautiful city. Really cool vibes out here. I love the Northeast. Gonna be an amazing weekend. Saturday night, Bree and I are going out to get some dinner. We're looking for some seafood and we found a place called Gather here in the Seaport District, hoping to get some oysters, a lobster roll. Are you excited for seafood? I don't need seafood. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. We'll see you there. Just got done with dinner and the lobster roll was delicious as expected. And it is chilly out. This Northeastern cold is a little, hits a little bit different. It's in your bones. <laughs> but we are gonna go ahead to bed and then we're waking up bright and early for our 2.5 mile shakeout run, which Bree and my mom are also gonna do. It's gonna be a fun time. So we will see you bright and early in the morning. Murner. Hey. Murner. Murner. Good morning. What up, squad? We feeling good? This is a fucking Boston energy right here. Let's go. Let's go. I love it. Um, well, one, thank you guys so much for pulling up. This is super fun to get people from all over the world. And obviously Boston is just heralded to just bring people from literally everywhere into one spot. So this is super fun. I mean, I'm sure I can speak for these guys, but I'm super humble to just see all of you beautiful people right here. So one, shout out to these two also for coordinating a lot of this. It helps having people logistically. <laughs> Woo! Take your kids! I'm sure we'll chat more on the run, but it'll be a quick two and a half shakeout. There's probably like, 500 shakeout runs happening. Yeah. So I'm glad that you guys want to be a part of this one. Yeah, thank you guys all for coming. This is what it's all about, get people together. Like Matt told you, about two and a half miles. We'll just do a pretty simple loop around here, go out by the river. Let's have fun. Everybody that's running tomorrow, good luck. Uh, we'll definitely get a group photo before we start. Are we ready, team? Yeah. Yeah. We just wrapped up the 2.5 mile shakeout run here in Boston this morning. We had a really solid turnout, some amazing people, got the community together. We're gonna go grab some breakfast now, then hit the packet pickup. Then we got the Red Sox game. It's gonna be an epic day. All right, we just crushed some breakfast, had some eggs, croissant, some fruit. Now we are heading to the expo, go to the packet pickup. Let's go. It's gold. Just left the expo. Now we are heading down to 
check out the finish line, grab a photo, the classic bib photo uh, right on the finish line. You can feel the energy in the city. We're on Boylston Street right now. You can just feel it. This place is, it's electric. I love it. It's gonna be a great day tomorrow. We are at Fenway Park, going to a Red Sox game. This place is epic. It's like you're you're taking a step back in time. Feels like we're in the 1920s. Epic times. Gonna be sick. Nice hat. Let's see it. Oh, lovely hat. Right, it is Sunday evening at 9 p.m. We just got back from a delicious Italian meal at Asagio in the north end of Boston. Slammed some gnocchi, got a ton of carbs in, crushed the carbs today, last three days. So we're, we're carved up, we're feeling good. I just set out my fueling for tomorrow morning. So to start with, I'm gonna wake up at about 5.30 a.m. and I'll drink this water bottle, about 20 ounces with one packet of electrolytes, a Morton solid uh, 225 with a banana. Oh, oh, <laughs> with a banana. And I'll also have a glass of beet juice, about 12 to 16 ounces of this in the morning. One to two of these mini bagels with some peanut butter. Then at about 6.45, I will hop on the bus that goes up to Hopkinton. We'll arrive in Hopkinton around eight or so. And then about 8.30 a.m. I will drink this water bottle in which we'll have the Morton Drink Mix 320, the two before black currant powder, three packets of Redmond's Relight Electrolytes. This will be about 2,500 milligrams of sodium right there with a Morton Solid 225 and a banana. During the race in my handheld water bottle, I will have another Morton Drink Mix 320 for some carbs. Another packet of blackcurrant powder, and another three packets of electrolytes for 2,400 milligrams of sodium. I've also got some gels in here. I'll be taking a gel every four miles or so. So I'll have about six gels with me total. But that is the fueling plan for tomorrow. Gonna be an epic day. Let me show you my gear real quick. All right, and then for our gear, we've got the new custom Stronger Faster Farther running hat. We've got the Vibrant Green Saucony Endorphin Elites with the Say Sky Combat Socks. We've got the custom Stronger Faster Farther Running Singlet with the logo on the front, slogan on the back. We've got the Saucony Outpace 3 inch shorts. I've got a gel, two gels pinned on the waistband right there for easy access. And then I've got two gels in the back pocket there. And then in the morning, because we're gonna be standing outside for like several hours before the race actually starts up in Hopkinton, I'm gonna be taking, I'm gonna be wearing an extra pair of socks so that I can have dry socks before the race starts, just in case it's raining. And then I will have sweatpants, cause it's gonna be a little chilly, and a sweatshirt. And the thing about all these extra clothes is you can't take them with you, obviously. So everything that you take up there, you either run back to Boston with you or you leave it up there in Hopkinton and it gets donated. So these will be donated along with socks. Not that anybody wants those, but they can have them. And then this is the start area bag, which I will put my fueling in. So that's all the gear, that's all the food, that's all the fuel. We're feeling great for the Boston Marathon tomorrow. Let's go rip it. Sub 250, 26.2 miles, let's go. I'm gonna give you a whole recap of the race just like this. I'm gonna kind of walk through everything that happened, everything that I can remember from start to finish of the race. You're around a bunch of like-minded people who are all there to go crush a marathon, 
Most of the people around you are very, very fast runners because they all qualified for Boston. So the energy is very real. But I met up with my friend Christian Sanchez, who is also going for sub 250. Our plan was just to pace off each other, stick together for as long as possible during the race. The first mile of the Boston Marathon is incredibly downhill, super steep downhill. And on paper, you think that you're gonna be able to make up some time there, run a fast mile but because you are just so crammed into all these people, as you can see in this photo, there's just so many people right next to each other. So our first mile, we wanted to be around a 625, 630, and we ended up running, I think it was like a 710, 715, almost a minute off of where we needed to be. So right off the first mile, we were already a minute back from our goal time. So we we're just trying to play catch up from there. And we expected the crowds to thin out a little bit more than they did, but they really never truly thinned out till maybe like mile 16, 17 when we got to the hills. So for the first whole half marathon, we were just constantly jumping around people, dodging around people, and we wasted a lot of energy doing this without really making up much time. And I told Christian that I think we need to pull back just a little bit, conserve some energy. We're probably gonna lose a little bit of time on these early miles, but again, we're gonna be saving energy that we can then use later on in the race. And literally from the start line till mile 26.2, there are people lining the entire course. There's no parts of the course that I can think of where there's no spectators at all. At some point, I felt like there was always somebody on either side shouting, screaming, cheering you on, clapping, and it lasted for 26 miles. And it rained up until I wanna say mile six, seven, somewhere around there. I don't remember exactly when it stopped, but honestly, I don't think the weather affected me too much. I honestly like the rain. I like the cooler temperatures because it helps keep you cool. I did have to jump around a bunch of puddles. I stepped in a lot of puddles, so my shoes were holding a lot of water, my socks were wet, but it is what it is. It's all just a part of the experience. At mile 16 was the start of the infamous Newton Hills. The Newton Hills are a set of four hills. You have one at 16, one at 18, one at 19, and one at 20, ending with the notorious heartbreak hill that finishes right at the top of mile 21. We knew we were gonna lose a little bit of time on the hills, but we paced them as planned, pretty much perfectly as we had expected. And then from mile 20 to 21 was heartbreak hill. Uh, about halfway up the hill, I actually saw some of my friends who work at Saucony. They gave me a good boost I needed for the second half of that hill to, to boost me up to the top. Um, so that was really great to see them. Once I got to the top of heartbreak hill, it's pretty much all downhill from there till Boston. There's some little small rolling hills, um, but for the most part, you can just rip. And fortunately, because we pulled back a little bit earlier on in the race, I was able to negative split the race and my fastest miles of the whole marathon came between mile 22 and the finish. At this point, when you're that close to the finish line, you just want to be done, to be honest. Your legs are gassed. You're giving it all you've got. You're trying to just soak in the experience, the energy, and you're just booking it to the finish with everything you've got. Also around mile 22, 23, it just started absolutely dumping rain. My shoes were just heavy, waterlogged. My socks were heavy and wet. And you've got crowds of people, even in the rain, out there cheering you on, yelling for you. Looking good, looking good. Come on, Jeremy. Let's go, Jeremy. I got you, boy. So much adrenaline, so much dopamine, so much energy. I just keep replaying those last six miles over and over in my head. On that 26 mile, you're finally in Boston. You take a right on Hereford. It's about a one or two block little stretch. This is where the crowds start getting really crazy. And then you take that famous left turn on the Boylston Street. It's about a quarter mile stretch from there. You're slightly downhill. You can see the finish line in sight. There's just lines of thousands of spectators. It's so loud. I'm literally getting chills talking about it right now. But you've got 26 miles on your legs. You're tired and beat mentally and physically, but you know that you're so close and you're just pushing, giving it all that you've got that last quarter of a mile stretch down Boylston Street. I crossed the finish line in two hours, 52 minutes, 55 seconds. I was about three minutes off of my goal time, but all that being said, I told myself from the beginning, yeah, I wanna set this goal, I wanna go and achieve it, but even if I don't, even if I miss by a little bit, I'm still running Boston. It's still an incredible experience. I still hit a six minute PR, so I'm super happy about that. So I will definitely count this whole experience as a win. I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to Bree and my mom for standing out in the rain and the cold and just following me around all weekend in Boston. You guys are an amazing support crew and I couldn't have done it without you. I wanna thank Christian, 
for pacing with me for those first 20, 21 miles. I wanna thank Nick, the photographer, for snagging so many amazing photos at the shakeout run and at the race. I wanna thank my coach, Will Nation, for getting me through this prep. He offered so much wisdom and guidance throughout the whole process. I couldn't have done it without you. I wanna thank all the volunteers and the spectators for being out there. You guys literally don't have to be out there, but you, the volunteers and the spectators, truly make the Boston Marathon what it is. So thank you so much for spending your time being out there. I wanna thank everybody that came to the ShakeOut Run or people that I was able to interact with, people that follow me on YouTube or Instagram, and I was able to get a photo with you. You came up and said hi, introduce yourself. That might've been one of my favorite parts of the whole weekend was getting to interact with all of you guys. That is my recap of the Boston Marathon. Again, an incredible experience, an incredible race that I will never, ever forget. But our trip did not end there. Bree, my mom and I actually spent a couple more days in Boston exploring, touring around. So we'll go back to the vlog and we will finish the vlog there. Right. It is Tuesday morning here in Boston. My mom took off to the airport bright and early this morning, so she is not here with us right now. But Bree and I are packing up, getting ready to leave the hotel. We're going to go to breakfast, then we're going to hit the Museum of Science, then we're going to go to the aquarium, and then we fly out later this evening. So still a fun day full of walking around Boston, touring, all kinds of stuff. Let's go explore Boston. Boston. We're going to go explore Boston. Let's go find a car. Let's go get the car. All right, that is the Boston Marathon weekend vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you took something out of this. I hope that you eventually get to run Boston if you haven't already. I highly recommend it. It is an incredible experience. I've got several other races coming up this year. On May 7th, I have the OC Marathon out in California. On May 13th, I have the Ram Party 50K trail race in Colorado Springs. On June 17th, I have the Bighorn 52 miler up in Wyoming. And then October 8th, we have the Chicago Marathon. So I hope I get to see more of you guys at some of those races later on this year. Again, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. And we'll see you in the next video.